Good morning. Good morning. I hardly have a voice. Getting over a cold. Today we're going to paint a Florida sunrise. Florida on the east coast of Florida. The, the Atlantic side. Daytona Beach, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Jacksonville. That's what the sunrise looks like over there. On the west side, on St. Petersburg and Clearwater and Naples and what else is up there? Pensacola. The west side. That would be a sunset. <laughs> I'm calling it Florida Sunrise. And uh, I'll show you how I did that. Right now. Okay. Well, let's get started. This one needs a ruler. Need a straight and, and uh, parallel, I guess horizon so I'm gonna put it right there two and a half I don't want it to be exactly in the middle that's kind of my point here so I'm just gonna let a light a light line right there just to get started here okay that looks good that looks good the light line keep the horizon straight because it's a relatively simple picture today so first thing i'll do is i'll get my soft brush this one and i'll get the sky wet see it's the sky and the sea it's all it is today it's a perfect florida picture <laughs> a florida could be a sunrise or sunset most of the beaches that people talk about are on the east coast so it's always a sunrise however the west coast the gulf gulf of mexico sunsets are beautiful of course i i would say sunsets are beautiful all over the world and it's interesting isn't it because we don't really know why they're beautiful I think sunrises are beautiful also. I have gone over to the east coast of Florida in early in the morning and drive, I would drive in the dark basically and get there just as the sun was rising and you go out to the water and there's usually nobody on the beach or very few people on the beach. And I know that sounds hard to believe because it's probably one of the most crowded beaches <laughs> There's Daytona Beach and Ormond Beach and some of the Florida beaches on the Atlantic side. But um, early in the morning, everybody's sleeping. <laughs> you go on, go on bike week and uh, you see a lot of bikers out there. Bikers, I don't mean to generalize, but bikers seem to like sun, the sun. <laughs> they like the sunrises. They like the sun. I don't know about the sunsets. But they like the sunrises. Yep, they do. So if you're a biker and you disagree with me, let me know. I got a biker story. Want to give him a biker story? So I have a, a, I had a brother. He passed away. His name was Bob. And Bob was a biker, a motorcycle guy. I mean, it, it was very serious for him. He was a he was a mechanic. He knew everything about cars. He loved cars. and um, He had a Harley Davidson. I think he had several of them. And he lived in uh, California and I lived in Florida. So a lot of his adult life, you know, I didn't see him. See what I did right there? I made a mistake right there already. I have to try and pull it up. I let the water creep into the water. <laughs> But anyway, so Bob was a motorcycle guy. And when I was 22, when Bob first moved to California, I thought I'd like to go to California and see what that's about. Los Angeles specifically is where he was. And uh, so I went out there and it was just all by myself. And I know 22 is an adult, but looking back at it now, I was just a kid, you know. So, um, he 
he had a roommate. This roommate's was, name was Steve. Steve has also since passed away. And uh, so Bob and Steve, both motorcycle guys, both car guys, both this, I guess you would say on the wild side, a little bit on the wild side. And they went out one night and they invited me to come with them. And I said, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. So um, after they left, I was sitting there thinking, what? Now, why didn't I go with them? That was stupid. I'm being shy. I'm being whatever. So I thought, well, let me, let me go. I think I know where they are. Because they told me the name of the bar they were going to. And it was not that far. And I didn't have a car at that time. So I had to walk. It wasn't that far. And at 22, you can walk really far. So, <laughs> so I walked to the bar. And I thought this must be the place because there's bikes everywhere motorcycles. I mean, they look like one of those scenes from a, from a movie, you know, where there's bikers everywhere. Biker bikes everywhere parked outside. I went inside looking for my brother and uh, again, I'm 20 toe. These guys look like they must <laughs> they look a lot older than me and uh, made me a little bit nervous, you know. I didn't know what to, what to say. And, Somebody asked me something, and I said, well, I'm looking for my brother. Who's your brother? I said, Bob. Well, oh my gosh, everybody in that bar knew Bob. They all knew Bob. I was like, wow, Bob knows everybody here. And so uh, they, they they warmed up to me. I was, like, I was like their brother all of a sudden. And uh, they invited me to shoot darts or throw darts, whatever you say. And uh, I did. I did not do well. <laughs> and they made fun of me, but there was a, there was a, what do you call it? It was that, like a, a camaraderie kind of making fun. You know what I mean? How guys are. And uh, so yeah, they, they had a good time making fun of my darts, my dart throwing skills. <laughs> but anyway, that was uh, my, my, my whole story. It doesn't last very long, does it? That particular story. But anyway, so. And Robin, you know, Robin was a, a biker chick before I knew her. Yep. Now we ride bicycles when we can. I haven't ridden them in a while, but... Yeah, she went from motorcycles to bicycles. <laughs> but we still go over to Bike Week. And uh, and also Bike Toberfest in, in uh, Daytona. So... I'm going to try to keep the sun right there. Right there, looks like a good place for the sun, right? Yeah. And I'm going to add some uh, some like storm clouds here, too. So we'll see how that works out. It's so funny, yesterday we went to um, a retirement community. That's what they call them, retirement communities. You might have heard of it. It's called The Villages. It's here in Central Florida. And uh, uh, we just walked around, you know, looking at the stuff. It's a, it's a place called Sumter Landing. And there's a lake there called Sumter Lake or Lake Sumter or something. And uh, everywhere we went, you could hear the, the town, the community radio station. Everywhere. I mean, everywhere. And it was weird because, you know, songs that I would associate with being young were being played. Now, keep in mind, I sometimes when you're old, I don't know how old you are, but I'm old. I'm almost 70. And sometimes I think when we're old, I couldn't have told you this when I was young. <laughs> I don't think we realize we're old. I don't really think so. I think it's one of those things where... I don't know. It's, you have to be there. You have to be there to understand it. I, I never feel old. Well, if I'm walking and I get out of breath real easy, then I feel old, I guess. But no, I don't really feel old. I, I just feel out of breath. That's, the, that's probably the most honest answer right there. Uh, see that part's got to be fixed. I gotta wait for it to dry before I fix it. 
I just want to get this water here. Try to keep the middle light so we can uh, let the sun be reflecting in it. And that's it. That's going to be the whole picture. I kind of wanted to do something with orange in it. And And yellow and red. So anyway, so they're playing these songs that um, I associate with being young, and of course, they play songs to cater to the the population that lives there. And the population that lives there is my age, which is uh, it's it's kind of cool in a way. But it's just so like you hear. I don't know if I can give you an example, but um, let me see what did I hear. Like, I heard John Lennon. I heard, you know, what's that song he did with me? Just before he died, it uh, was a song called Watching the Wheels. Oh, it was good to hear it, too. I hadn't heard it in so long. It kind of made me feel sad because of him having died. But especially the way he did. But anyway, so... Yeah, it was it was kind of it was cool and weird, weird because they were old songs that sounded new to me. But to somebody who's like twenty, they would probably think, "Oh, those are all old songs." And it's funny because I've been at this same place at night, and they have live bands at night, and the live bands are doing the same thing. They're playing songs that you would think were for young people but because I'm not young you know what I mean I'll tell you what though I do like some of the young music I can't tell you any names right now but there was a, a, a singer who died yesterday or it was in the news yesterday Mandisa when we did the radio show I used to love her song uh, Good Morning when we did the radio show, I used to use her song as the, as the morning song. Robin and I, for the show we did. She had a great voice. She died, she was only 40-something, right? That's not, that's not old. All right, now you can tell this is just the beginning here, but it is kind of cool how the water is doing what it does. I think I'm doing more of a watercolor technique with watercolor today you gotta keep that a lot of brightness there and uh, can't do anything until it dries so let me turn off the camera and I'll use my dryer and I'll come right back okay all right it's dry now didn't take me that long to do that all right now let's start adding some of those darker colors I'm going to use a, a brush with a flat edge. It's a little bit stiff, but it's soft enough. It's kind of half and half. So we want to make it dark. Okay, let me start on the edges so I don't mess up too bad. Very dark. Pencil line is important here. This is where I want to get right up against that pencil line. Keep it, keep it really, really flush up against it. Trying to get a little bit dark right there. Cover that mistake. I can add a little bit of orange there. Well, that doesn't look right. All right, I made it too dark, so I'm going to bring it over here. There we go. Uh, 
Yeah, so yesterday when we went walking, we uh, saw an alligator in the water, which was kind of cool. Didn't, not close. Didn't get a good picture of it, but it was there. This is, there are signs all over the place, don't feed the alligators. And then it gives you the, the Florida statute. And that makes it illegal to feed the alligators. People do, though. I'm pretty sure people who don't know why that's dangerous. Yeah, they, they feed them. They feed the monkeys too. Did, I, did you ever know that there are monkeys here in this part of the state? On the Silver River, there are monkeys. And uh, they live in the trees, of course. And they are left over from something. If you ask where they came from, you will hear a couple different stories. Now, I wasn't here when any of that happened. But I've heard these stories so many times. And the funny thing about the stories about where the monkeys came from is that the people who tell them are absolutely sure that their version is the only true one. Ask somebody else, I promise you. If it's somebody who differs from them, they're gonna tell you, no, that's not what happened, here's what happened. So I don't know, I'm just telling you that everybody who has an opinion about where those monkeys came from has an opinion. It's, it's like arguing about pizza. Who has the best pizza? Don't even start with that. Nobody wants to tell you <laughs> that it's possible that there's good pizza in other places other than their favorite place. No, everybody wants to believe that the only good pizza is the one that they found. <laughs> maybe when they were a kid or maybe when they were traveling or I don't know. And, uh, and New York always gets the credit for the best pizza. I'm from New York. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to. I'm going to betray some of you right now, but I've had some really good pizza here in Florida, too. Maybe I'm just too easy. <laughs> maybe. maybe. All right. Now, but as far as the monkeys go, so, so one of the stories is that they were brought in because the... Now, this is true. The Tarzan movies were partially filmed, maybe completely filmed, I don't really know, in uh, Silver Springs. And... Uh, so some people say they were brought in for the Tarzan movies. And those people who tell you that are absolutely sure that they're right. Other people will tell you that they were brought in by a guy who wanted to uh, make it more interesting for tourists because he had like a, a boat tour business. And so those people will tell you that he's the one who brought the monkeys in. And... Uh, and then there's been stories of trying to, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, sterilize, sterilize the monkeys so that they uh, can't reproduce. I don't know about that because they're still reproducing, apparently, I mean, unless these things live forever because I've been here over 50 years and there's still monkeys out there. And what they are is Rhesus, R-H-E-S-U-S, -S, macaques, M, oh gosh, M-A-C-A-C-Q-E maybe, macaques, Rhesus, macaques, sounds like Rhesus pieces, right, sounds like a candy bar, but yeah, they're out there, and those animals you're not supposed to feed, you're not supposed to feed any of them, because they'll get used to you feeding them, and they'll, they'll lose their fear of people, and they'll come up to people, and it's not a good thing. So, it's in the zoo, it's different. In the zoo, they give you f uh, f uh, food to feed them. I almost said fish because there's a place. Where is this place? I think it's in, oh, I think it's SeaWorld. I think in SeaWorld, they give you little fish to feed the, uh, the otters. And the otters will come up to the edge of the tank and you can throw it throw it to them and they will catch them which is kind of cool 
Yeah. By the way, if you're coming to Florida and you're doing the research on where to go as far as theme parks, um, I know Disney's probably on your list, and I know Universal Studios is on your list, so I can't tell you about I, I could tell you about them, but you already know more than I probably do on those places. I'm suggesting you look at some of the other ones. Bush Gardens is a good place. Um, SeaWorld is a good place. And they're not usually as crowded from what I hear. I haven't gone in years, but I, I, I have friends who've come down to Florida and then they come to visit Robin and me and they'll say, oh, we went to SeaWorld and it was great. There was no lines. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. So... I don't think I don't think they have Shamu anymore. Do you remember Shamu, the uh, whale? I think they stopped using that whale as a as a way to market um, the the theme park. I think so. Now I'm just adding a little bit of dark. I don't know if this is burnt umber or black, but. Just adding a little bit of it to make it a little bit darker. I want to keep that blue there, but I don't want to. I, w I don't want it to be uniform. I want it to be darker in some places, especially close here to the to the camera, so to speak. I was at the ocean one time at night. I was at Daytona Beach. This is when I was much younger. You wanna know when? It was like 1977, 78, somewhere around there. And it was parked, because back then, you could still park, you could still drive on the beach in some places, but not everywhere. Back then you could drive everywhere. It became too much. People were not obeying the rules and people were getting hurt from cars and so they, they changed so that a lot of places no longer allow cars but some still do but anyway back then I was on the beach with my car and I was just parked looking at the water and it was nighttime. I guess I was watching the sunset although you can't really see the sunset when you're looking east but I was watching I was just waiting for the sun to go down and I saw something in the water in front of my car Oh, it's a few yards away from the from the water, and I turned on my headlights to see what it was, and I swear it looked like a person. I thought there was a person swimming in the water, and I thought maybe they were in trouble. So I got out of the car to, to help, and you know what it was? It was a sea turtle, and I'm assuming it was a female sea turtle, probably coming up to lay her eggs. In, in the sand because that's what they do and that was kind of cool to see I wish I had a camera that day that would have been good I, I always have a camera now I didn't always have a camera back, back then I mean yeah, we all do right everybody's got a phone with a camera in it so um, can you see what I'm doing I have another sea turtle story I, I may have shared with you that I played music when I was younger in bars and lounges so I was playing music in a lounge in uh, West Palm Beach or Palm Beach I think it was called Riviera Beach I think or Riviera Beach anyway uh, and, what, and, I, and since I worked nights I mean, my, my job basically was 9 p.m. to 2 a.m., you know, playing music in the bar. And uh, so I would get up early, because I'm always an early riser anyway. So I'd get up early, and then I'd go walk on the beach in the sun, sunrise. My sunrise stroll, back in those days. And one morning I got up, and there were turtles, little turtles everywhere, 
little baby turtles that had hatched. And you know, back then, the turtles would just go toward the light. They still go toward the light. But back then, nobody was telling anybody to keep your lights turned off because it confuses the turtles. The turtles go toward the light, which is the surf, the white um, surf on the, on the, as the waves break. That's, I guess, what they're instinctively, I don't know the word is trained, but that's what, that's what they instinctively know to go towards. And uh, so there was some in the parking lot of the hotel I was staying at, and I picked them up. And I put them on the sand because I knew that they were trying to get to the water. I did see in the newspaper they they would tell you don't don't touch them, don't pick them up. But these guys would have died if they didn't, because they couldn't get over that curb. They were too little. They must have come toward the hotel because of the lights. And uh, I picked them up, put them there, and then I then I walked down to the to the surf. Uh, to the edge, to the surf, and uh, watched, I just watched them as this amazing natural miracle was happening right in front of me. These little, little guys just born, just, just new to the world, and they already know where to go. Isn't that incredible? I think so. I think so. Well, I hope that looks like a, the sea when the sun is setting. I'm going to hide it into the sky yet, so it's hard to tell. But now i got to lift up that area right there. It's a little bit too dark. So I'm going to lift it up, make it what wider. Yeah. There we go. There's our sun. How about that, huh? How about that? Isn't that incredible? The sun just emerged out from the water car. Isn't that incredible? Boy, I'm surprised how well that came out. I better stop passing mess with it. Make it might, I might mess it up. Just leave it like that. There's one little piece I don't like. There we go. Well, look at that. Isn't that cool? Now I gotta make it darker everywhere else. But that came out nice. Let's hope it stays nice. Let's hope it stays nice. I'm gonna add a little more orange to some of these places here. I'm gonna get this rich, rich, rich orange and Water it down a little bit. Make it very thin, almost like a glaze. I want some of this area here to be. This sky too. So this orange in here. I kind of wanted this picture to be a very red-toned picture. So now I'm just basically glazing over a lot of the areas that were white. I want them to have maybe a little bit of white still peeking through. to get this orange in there. And I'll take care of that sky later on, up the back of the card, I mean. Yeah. That looks nice. 
That looks nice. Alright, now I gotta do these clouds. How should I do the clouds? Let me try purple and see if I like it. See if we like the way purple looks as a cloud color. Keep it light. It's, it's starting to look okay. I guess purple's a good starting color. It probably won't stay purple. We'll see. I painted a sky in, in an office. In a store, too. The, the first one was an office, which was the, where I worked at the radio station. I painted the, the the ceiling to have clouds, and uh, and then and this was in a mall. The radio station was in a mall, so one of the other shops, a shoe store, in that same mall, admired the the painting and asked the boss who did it, and he told him I did it, and so I ended up doing one for the shoe store too. I think both of them are gone. Well, I know, I know the one the radio station is gone. They, it's, it's no longer there, and they, they changed it into an axe throwing place. <laughs> yeah, where Robin and I used to broadcast from. They now they throw axes. That's pretty cool. I think my, I think my nephews went there. Oh, that's not happening right there. See, it's bleeding in there because it's wet. All right, just leave it like that. I'll take care of it later. Get some of this, lighten this up a bit. Little tiny clouds. to fix that I think unless unless it looks good like that I'll, I'll make a decision at least the purple's working I guess it's working as a good cloud color wasn't sure it would work
You let the water do its thing. Let the water change the way the clouds look. That's pretty cool. It just happens naturally as it dries. I do think I want to fix that right there. See if I can lift it. I have to wait for it to dry and then I can lift it up. And then I think the picture's done. What do you think? I don't think I need to do much more. I think that's okay. All right, let me just pick up that little area right there with the white, with the where the sun is. All right, let's try to get that up. I think it's working. You know what? It's okay. Maybe I can lift up some of this other down here. Make it a little white down there too. Um, the only thing I'm thinking is maybe, I hope I don't ruin it here, but I feel like there should be a little, a little bit more depth to some of the bottoms of these clouds. I'm just going to add a little bit of, make them darker on the bottom, almost like a gray wash. Basically just dirty water. My dirty water technique uses, comes into play a lot. I still feel like that white area is I'm still bothered by that white area right there. All right. over here too. Maybe a little deeper, a little richer. a little bit of orange reflecting in the clouds.
I'm going to call this one simple. I hope you don't mind. I, I think because this seems like a, a simple one to me that you could um, learn from. I, I know some of you are watching to, to learn. I'm assuming you are younger. I, although no offense to anybody, I just, I, I, all I'm trying to decide is what to call it. And I think if I call it a simple, maybe it'll attract the attention of some people. Because this kind of is really simple and there's really plenty of room for mistakes. It's, it's a very forgiving subject. It'll, it'll probably work out even if you make mistakes like I did. <laughs> I mean, there's mistakes all over this thing, right? Not mistakes. It, you know what? Uh, what was his name? Bob Ross used to say happy accidents. And that's that's exactly what this, some of these things are. It's just that one little area right there is bothering me. I'm going to try one more time. I'm afraid if I keep poking it, I'm going to put a hole in the paper. You know what I'll do? I'll use a little bit of gouache. Let me get a little bit of gouache on there. I have some white gouache over here. Just a little bit. Gotta reactivate it with the water first of all. Let me see if I just put a little dot. Oh, yeah, that might do it. That might get rid of that little piece I'm bothered by. There we go. Couple of little areas, the white caps almost like I got white on the brush. Yeah. I guess that's good. Alright, let me fix that background now. That background is uh I want it to look I want it to blend more with the rest of it, so I'm just this is not the background, this is the back of the card. So, just scrub it in there. I don't, I don't want to get it into the picture itself, the front of the card. Just scrub it in there. Really lift it as much as I can. And spread it around. And then when it dries, it'll be okay. And it gives the back of the card some character. There we go. That's the whole thing. All right, one more area here. I need to make that a little darker. Here we go. There's our, our sunrise. How about we call it a sunrise? Florida sunrise. I'll put a little bit of orange in this one over here. Just a tiny bit. Simple Florida sunrise. I'm still picking on it, huh? Still messing with it. Some of these edges a little darker, that's what I'm thinking. Just for the composition. It's 
to make it a little bit more mysterious in the corners. Here we go. I think that's it. Alright. It's not dry up there yet. I will let it dry and then I'm going to fold it up. But there's our Florida sunrise. Hopefully you enjoyed the, the video. I'll show you a picture of it when I'm done. Well, you'll see it in a second because I'm going to turn up the camera. All right, you guys, thank you so much. Please subscribe. Please uh, let me know what you think. All right, take care.